Mackenzie Johnston with Cattle News Central, bringing you your July 28th, your Thursday evening cattle industry headlines, brought to you by Ag Risk Advisors. They manage your risk so you can manage your operation. They are the experts in educating, evaluating, and executing risk management programs for each individual operation while providing top-notch customer service. Now is the time to be thinking about enrolling in the Pasture Rangeland Forage Program for the 2023 crop year. If you want to learn more about this, go ahead and reach out to Alex and Nea to learn how to set up a tracking policy so you can understand how the program works firsthand. Agrisk Advisors, risks averted, legacies preserved. Yahoo News has reported Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is aggressively pushing to accelerate the fight against climate change, which is sparking a showdown with Canadian farmers. The government is proposing to cut emissions from fertilizer by 30% by 2030 as part of their plan to, uh, to become to go net zero uh, in the next three decades. But farmers say to achieve this, they will be forced to shrink grain output significantly at a time when the world is scrambling for more supplies. Additionally, if this proposal actually becomes reality, farmers stand to lose $8.08 billion by 2030 due to reduced output. This proposal comes at a time when farmers in the Netherlands have been protesting uh, climate targets that aim to put them out of business. We have seen the headlines, we have seen the, the, the videos on YouTube, the internet, whatever. It is unreal what the farmers over in the Netherlands are dealing with. According to an analysis commissioned by Fertilizer Canada, Canada could lose over 160 million metric tons of canola, corn, and spring wheat between 2023 and 2030 due to this plan. That's nearly double Canada's expected grain, uh, grain production this season. The approach for how the government is going to reduce fertilizer use amongst farmers to achieve climate goals is still under development, and the government is accepting feedback until August 31st. Obviously, farms, uh, farmers and farm groups are arguing in favor of fertilizer use because it results in more food. Believe it or not, people need to eat. Fertilizer has contributed to spring wheat yields increasing more than 40% in the last decade through 2020 compared to the 1990s. Similarly, canola yields rose 56% over the same time period. It is unreal to sit back and watch these governments around the world supposedly uh, work to solve climate change, the issue of climate change, by cutting into agriculture. Let's get rid of um, the industry that feeds us. That's a great plan. Great plan. This update is also sponsored by 4T Ag Insurance, your go-to contractor for ag insurance. 4T Ag is owned and operated by Colt Tritt. He is a one-man show. He himself ranches, so he understands all the risks that go along with the livestock industry. 4T Ag, they offer LRPs on both fed and feeder cattle. They offer PRF insurance and just about every other insurance option out there. If you want to learn more about 4T Ag, head on over to www.4tag.net. That is the number four, T-A-G.net. So a little bit more about climate change. The Irish Times has reported earlier this week, Ireland's government introdu introduced a plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the ag sector by 25% by 2030. Ag is actually the lowest on the totem pole when it comes to reducing greenhouse gas emissions with this plan. This plan is incredibly aggressive. Ireland plans to reduce emissions from electricity by 75%, transportation 50%, commercial and public buildings 45%, residential buildings 40%, and industry 35% by 2030. The plan promises to build more offshore wind farms to produce green energy in the future and to incentivize the production of biogas and solar energy on farms. We have seen Europe go down the same path. They were all about green energy at one point. They didn't need those fossil fuels. No need for those. And so when they went all went to all green energy, it didn't work too well for them. So they needed energy, so they went to Russia, they turned to Russia, and they were dependent on Russia. And look at where that has landed them today. This push to go all green, these governments, these countries, one of the worst ideas out there. The government is claiming that any measures asked of farmers will be voluntary and incentivized rather than mandated, but according to senior government officials, inevitably, inevitably, 
the size of the national dairy herd is going to be reduced. There are about 6 million head of cows in Ireland, to give you some idea. Obviously, various farm organizations in Ireland are fighting this plan, claiming it is a sellout of the family farm model. According to a government official, farming only accounts for 1% of Ireland's national income and job creation in the industry is marginal. Farming is an outsized part of Ireland's CO2 emissions, with farming, with farming making up more than a third of their national output. He went on to say the reason why farming is such an important part of this discussion regarding greenhouse gas emissions is because Ireland is one of the highest CO2 emitting countries per capita in the world, and that is because of farming. Uh, for those of you that do not know, here's a little fact to throw at you. Uh, Ireland, they're not going to save the world. <laughs> I don't care if they slaughter every cow in their country. They get rid of all their livestock and they crush every car. It is not going to make a difference. Not at all. We've seen other countries like the Netherlands and Canada, uh, as we just talked about, take these radical steps to supposedly save the, the environment and appease every tree hugger out there. But those steps, uh, they don't matter. All of these efforts to save the environment, they don't matter because we have our big emitters. We have China, we have India. Those countries, they do not give a damn about the environment. All they care about is building industry, growing their country. That's all they care about. They don't believe in regulations. So like I said, we can crush every car and get rid of every cow in Ireland. And it's not going to matter. These proposals, they are just complete madness. And then also, all these proposals, yeah, they do, they do target other industries, but I feel like one of the main targets is always agriculture. And it is ridiculous to think that agriculture is the issue when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions. These people need to do their research. But in the meantime, if you want to cut agriculture, I encourage you all to do so. And when you get hungry, let me know how that works for you. Finally, Market Watch has reported... The U.S. economy shrank at an annual 0.9% pace in the second quarter, which means that our country is officially in a recession as the technical definition for a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative growth. Uh, but our government, they're trying to change that definition. We'll talk about that here in a second. So for all of you that do not recall, GDP, gross domestic product, shrunk at a 1.6% pace in the first quarter of this year. Pretty significant. Uh, the back-to-back -back declines in GDP are the first since the Great Recession that we experienced back in 2007 through 2009. A sharp drop in business investment and declining inventory levels are to blame for the negative GDP in the second quarter, and also government spending fell sharply. So as I just said, the funny thing with this situation is that our government is now trying to change the definition of a recession, even though it has always, always been two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. They are just scrambling. On Sunday, Janet Yellen, Treasury Secretary, this is just appalling that this woman is our Treasury Secretary. She denied that the U.S. was heading toward a recession and instead claimed the economy is in a transition with growth that is slowing. Talk about being out of touch. Because if you are, <laughs> if you aren't living under a rock and you are somewhat in touch with reality, you understand that our country is in a recession. And in my opinion, I think we've been there for a while. In the last 18 months, Biden, Congress, the Federal Reserve, they have set our country up for failure. And they've done a damn good job. And because of that, we now have to deal with a recession. Instead of acknowledging the situation at hand and taking responsibility for their failed policies, the Biden administration chooses to play word games, just like they've done with inflation. They will twist anything to make it look like it's not their fault or it's not as bad as it seems. But little do they know, the working American, all of us folks out here, we know how bad it is because we live and breathe it every day. The administration, by their actions, what they're doing, they're just adding insult to injury for hundreds of American families, uh, for American, for hundreds of American families that have been dealing with a recession for months. And they are demonstrating just how out of touch they are uh, with reality by denying the fact that we are in a recession. It is absolutely appalling to watch this administration uh, just try to dig their way out of this hole. But like I said, 
the American people, we know where we stand. We're the ones out here dealing with this, uh, with this economy that is just falling apart. That is all I have for you guys this morning. I hope you've all had a great week. You guys have yourself a wonderful weekend. I will be back here on Monday morning. Catch you later.